hello there. Welcome back to Brambleberry. We are continuing the uh, earth tube project today. And I went and got a bunch of Schedule 40 drain pipe. It's four inch drain pipe that I'm gonna use, a bunch of fittings. And I'm gonna start to try and dry fit this all together and make sure that um, I have a slope going downhill. And uh, yeah, that's what we're on to today. So I think probably the hardest part of this is going to be getting the pipe up and in to the shed there. I probably should have it coming out of the ground closer, but I don't really want to dig that close and kind of destabilize the ground there. So I came back a little further here. As usual, I'm kind of making all this up as I go. I got to make sure that I get that downward slope going and that I get as much of the pipe as deep as I can in order to get the full benefit of this. I'm really not even sure I have enough a length of pipe to make this work. I mean, I have enough pipe for the trench, but I don't know. Anyway, I've done a bunch of reading and stuff up on this, and I think I have more than enough uh, length underground, but I don't know if I am was able to get deep enough. I dug down about as deep as I could go, with the uh, the little backhoe there and before I was like hitting rock and stuff. So this is gonna have to be it and we're just gonna have to see what happens and if it doesn't work, oh well, you live and you learn. A lot of these projects that I'm doing are kind of like small scale versions of what eventually we're probably gonna do when we build our house to make it more uh, energy efficient. We'll just uh, start piecing things together and see how it goes. So when I put a level on each one of these sections, they are all sloping downhill slightly. When I get up here and I put it on this one though, this deep part of the hole here is a little deeper than this spot and that's because of that stupid rock. I need to probably put this up just a little bit higher in order to get dropped down to this section of pipe so that it can drop all the way out. I've got two more sections of pipe and I'm gonna need more down there, but I also need one more here and probably some pieces up here to put fittings on and get up into the shed. I probably need one more pipe, but I only have these two and I can finish this end part, wherever it is, out, uh, out there. I can bury that, you know, whenever. So I'm probably gonna leave that off for right now and then work on getting this up here where it needs to be first. Then I can start backfilling all that down to that and I can get more pipe if I need it. If I have leftover pipe, I can just push it on the end there and all will be good. But the other thing I've been debating about is whether or not I wanna glue these. I imagine I probably do because I don't want water infiltration. So I'm gonna probably have to, after I get everything dry fitted together, I'm gonna go back through and pull it all apart and uh, put some glue on it. Uh, that's really unfortunate that I gotta prop it up that much. Can't go down any deeper there, so that's probably just what's gonna have to be. Yeah, I'm probably going to need pretty much close to all of this to get from here up to there. I would like to keep it down in there longer before it turns and goes up. I do have some of these, I don't know what, what angle these are, but they're not 90s, 45s I guess, maybe a little less. That might be what it needs. But that won't go on the end of there. I have to cut a piece put in there first.
One angle's too much, the other one's not enough. I could do it like I got it now. I don't even know if you all can see that in there. But that's got it lifted way up higher. I want it down deeper in the dirt than that. This hat stuff driving me crazy. Looks like I gotta do a little more digging up there. So right up here, I think if I dig the dirt out a little bit more, it's gonna let that lay down a little flatter and give this a little bit more leeway here for that angle to work correctly. Yeah, so that seemed to help a bit. That uh, pipe sitting back down on that big dirt clod that I put it on as a point of reference there. And then we should be good to go down here, going downhill the rest of the way. And now I gotta figure out how to get into the shed there. Whenever I did the uh, ventilation fan for the solar shed, I had a hole saw that I used for that. And I think it's actually the same size as this particular pipe is. Look at me. <laughs> That's pretty ridiculous, that hat. Anyway, uh, I think it's the same size. So I gotta find that though as I put it away somewhere. And I'm gonna use that to drill a hole into the side of the shed and then stick a pipe in through that and then try to get my fittings to get down to that other one. Um, it's kind of a pain in the butt trying to get these fittings to all work. Apparently you can bend these pipes if you heat them up. I'm gonna to try to avoid that. But if it comes down to it, I may have to do a little bit of that. I don't know, we'll see. Found it. So for now, the fan that's gonna pull air through this thing is gonna be this fan. So it's up top, it's gonna pull hot air out. And then somewhere in the back here, probably on this side wall back here is where I'm gonna drill a hole through. I just gotta get my measurements to try and get it in a decent place there. Uh, that way, cold air will get sucked in from the back here and come up and uh, warm air goes out. The hope is, is that in the winter time, warm air will come in and it'll be less work that those batteries he heaters have to do. This is just guesstimating, of course. I meant to get a little further that way, but oh well. There's still support there. Now one of these pipes should just fit right in that. Yep. It's a little big, but that's okay. We'll seal all around that. Boy, if I do that just right, I might not have to cut a whole bunch of, or do a whole bunch of fittings. It looks like it's almost aimed right at that. And actually, if I use one of these fittings with a flare on it, it fits a lot more snug. So that whole saw is a little bigger than it needed to be, but that's okay. That'll, that's like perfect for that flare. So now I gotta get from that down to this. I was curious as to how well that fan's pulling. So I got the door closed now. When I come across here, well, now the wind's blowing, of course. And yes, this is toilet paper. Well, if the breeze stops blowing, we'll be able to tell here. There it goes. It's sucking the toilet paper in. And that would probably get stronger if I sealed the door up a little bit more. But good enough for now. And... Actually, I don't know if it'll do it or not, but if the solar shed is hot and the air in the pipe is cooler, then 
I'm no expert in this stuff as usual, but I would think that would create a temperature differential that would cause the air to flow through the pipe, albeit not fast, but it would cause it to circulate up and out. So maybe, oh, we'll see. That'll be another video, I guess, when I test this thing out, because we'll have to see how it does. If it works in the summertime, we'll have to see how it does in the wintertime too. That came in handy. And there we are, got our connection made all the way down. That's pretty much sitting on top of that dirt clod. Might be a little elevated. This bend is a little eh, right there, but I think we'll make it work. We might be able to bow the pipes out a little bit. And as you noticed, I have some more TP because I'm curious again to do a TP test now that this is hooked up and see if it is still pulling air. And it is. Yeah, it's pulling air. I actually can feel it coming through a little bit. Yep, there it goes. Just about like it was up there. So that's cool. I guess it's time to start gluing things together. Are you wanting to see me glue all that stuff together? No? Okay, I'm going to put that in. For the most part, we got everything glued together. And I made a little discovery here down at the end of the run. So I was pretty good about getting this to be downhill more or less until the very end here. And there's some humps and stuff there that I got to do some more work with the backhoe on. Uh, I guess I could dig out by hand, but who wants to do that? So I can't put this pipe in yet, but that's okay. I got to get the back over here and get that fixed. And then, and then I'm trying to decide if I want this whole piece on here or not. So because of the way I did this, I ended up having enough. I didn't have to go get an extra piece. This was just uh, the little piece I cut out for up by the shed. This is what was left of it. So that should work for that. Got that dug out some more and I actually cut the pipe off because the length it was was going to run me right into this old stump here and I didn't want to be into that. So we're just stopping it early here. And now we're on to backfilling. If I can reach the front loader over, I might use it to try and pull some back, but I don't know if it'll reach that far. I may have to do it all with the, uh, with the backhoe because, well, there's all that back there. And I guess I could clear it all, but that's just more work. Got her all covered up, all the way down there. Still got a little bit of work to do, cleaning up here, but it's fairly level. I'm probably gonna have to bring in some more dirt, some topsoil and put out over this, especially where that trench was, cause I know all that's gonna settle down. I tried really hard not to drive on top of that cause I didn't want to bust my pipe but I did have to go across it a few times. So hopefully it's still working and we still got some airflow through there. I guess I could go do the teepee test to find out. All right, here we go with the teepee test. Yep. It's like it's still sucking in there. Definitely. Look at that, even tore the teepee the cats approve gives them more places to uh, do their business they always like fresh dirt the other thing I'm probably gonna have to do is some sort of insulation on this pipe I could just put some uh, uh, oh, here we go with the hat again whatever that's better <laughs> I could just put some uh, dirt piled up there for a ways, but I don't want to do that all the way up to the shed. 
So I'll have to get some kind of wrap or something to put around it. But yeah, so I'm at the end of putting this thing in and it just occurred to me that I don't think I ever talked about what an earth tube actually is. It uh, is a tube, a pipe of some sort that goes through the ground. It's buried at a certain depth. Uh, I think like, I don't know a lot about that kind of stuff, just what I've read, but it's good to get it down below your uh, frost line where that, wherever that is, the deeper, probably the better. Uh, but it's for uh, using the regular temperature of the earth to cool or heat, or basically it doesn't really cool, I guess it kind of cools or heats, but more so it regulates the temperature of wherever you pipe it to. So you draw air through this tube and into your structure and the air that's coming in is a constant temperature of 50 whatever. So in the uh, summertime, that would be a nice little uh, temperature to have coming into your dwelling. In this case, I'm using it for the solar shed and uh, trying to keep it regulated so that our batteries stay cooler and our inverter stays cooler and everything works more efficiently. Anyhow, I think this is where we're leaving it today. Uh, we'll have to do some tests and stuff to see how well it works. I mean, I know I already did the TP test, you know, that's a very, very scientific one. <laughs> but uh, some other ones to, you know, see what kind of air temperature we got coming through there. I want to wait until, you know, the ground kind of settles a bit, you know, and uh, rebounds to whatever temperature it was. And then we'll see how we're doing and if it works to keep the solar shed a little bit cooler. We got some uh, 100 degree days coming up, so fingers crossed that it does do that. Anyhow, that's all I got for today, and I hope you have a blessed day, and I thank you for watching.